Now, joining us till about 45 after are state rep Matt Shea, VoteShea.com is his website, and Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs last year went out to Spokane because it was national news when we played a clip of the sheriff's deputy and the SWAT team at a Walmart saying we have this MRAP for constitutionalists and people who are stockpiling guns, who statistically have the lowest crime rates in the country. Look it up. And then we have other clips from Indiana and Ohio and Michigan and you name it. Same thing. This is the federal talking point. You've been given armored vehicles for the veterans, for the gun owners, for the Christians, for the constitutionalists. That's national news. So six and now it's seven members of the legislature uh, are really great patriots. Uh, they even wear the Info 1776 pin. They sent me a photo of that. It was awesome. We got to dig that up from their Twitter and put it up. I forgot to tell the guys about it. And there's just so much data to go over here. I could talk a million miles an hour. It's better that I just turn it over to Joe Biggs, turn it over to Representative Shea, and also turn it over to the sheriff himself. We're not going to play the whole thing, but when we played this video, he came out and said, we're liars, that it wasn't for constitutionalists. And then he came out and said that InfoWars was death threatening him. And then in his next breath said, that's why we need the armored vehicles for the constitutionalist. So this guy is either one of the worst liars I've ever seen or something's wrong with him. And I mean that very serious. That's my opinion. I mean, I don't want to fight with the sheriff. I'm not some type of police officer hater. In fact, I respect the office of the sheriff. It's elected. That's the most respectable constitutional law enforcement office there is. And we have sheriffs across the country from Milwaukee sheriff to you name it. We have the sheriff on all the time. I've had him on for 20 years that launched the sheriff movement to try to get liberty back, uh, of course. So it's very painful to see this and something's going on. He's either trying to bait us or he's being manipulated by the Southern Poverty Law Center or some other organization. Let's play the clip that started all this last year of the sheriff's deputy saying it's for constitutionalists. Here it is. Well, this, the nice thing about this piece of equipment is that if somebody is directing fire toward a team that's trying to get in, they, can, they safely can, they can pull right up to a front. Take enemy fire and still try to address a threat without being fear of getting shot. So I'm thinking that is totally appropriate in Iraq, but where, what kind of a situation in the U.S. would you well, see that happening? I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons, a lot of, a lot of ammunition. I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons, a lot of, a lot of ammunition. They have, and they have, uh, you know, weapons here locally. Okay, and then he said the tape was edited, so we put out the entire 12-minute tape we got from the listener. Uh, but again, we weren't even breaking this. It was already out for a week. We just wrote a story about it. DrudgeReport.com picked it up. Fox News picked it up. And then we'll play later in the broadcast other sheriff's deputies at other departments saying the exact same thing with the exact same MRAPs. I mean, it's chilling to have armored heavy vehicles, wheeled tanks that you know Joe fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, in America, and they tell us it's for us, the Democratic Party basically does. And, and of course, a lot of these reps that are fighting back against this are veterans themselves, and the sheriffs come out and call them traitors and run down their service. Kind of like when you criticize Jade Helm, they kind of said, oh, he claims he was in the Army when they know you were in Rolling Stone, GQ, and in Army Times. I mean, you were somebody they pushed in front of the cameras because you were in a heavy combat unit. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, maybe maybe you were in the military. Maybe, you know, Matt Shea was in the military. Maybe these other people. It's really crazy how they try to deceive. So, Joe, what do you think is really going on here? And then we're going to go to Matt Shea. Well, this guy, the sheriff walks around with blinders on. And then the fact that he's using these YouTube comments as threats, we get death threats on YouTube. I mean, Every day. That's just what happens on YouTube. I mean, I've got some of them right here that says, I hope your MRAP and your SWAT team takes you down. You know, this is something that they said that was on an InfoWars comment board that was in the Inlander article. Cops and then they said that we said this. Yeah, we don't. This is a major cover story anybody that can hundreds log. of thousands read saying we're saying kill cops. Yeah, anybody can log on to YouTube. Anybody can post anonymously and put some kind of comment up. That has nothing to do with us. No one at InfoWars condoned that. No one here wrote that. So how does that have to do with us? Well, they're I going along with the sheriff because first he said we said it a year ago, and now they're running it saying that we're saying it.
Yeah, they're saying the Infowars behind We could it. go on the Inlander and write that and say they said it. Yeah, exactly. So all we're doing is trying to confront the fact that this guy is out of control completely. The fact that he says he's going to use these MRAPs for constitutionalists. What's wrong with being a constitutionalist? What's wrong with wanting to stand up for that? And then the fact that in like some places, like in Washington, if you call 911, you have to say that you're a vet or not because they're going to approach you differently if they come to your home. There's a huge problem going on. It's really crazy. The people that have hijacked our government want to start a war with people in America that still are Americans. I mean, it comes down to that. If you're just mainline, mom and apple pie, you want low taxes, right to defend yourself, private property, you're just a good, hardworking person. You're the enemy because criminals have taken over and they're trying to manipulate police now into believing that we're the enemy to have a civil war. That's my view. We, of course, can give people the name of this sheriff, talk more about him, get some background on him. But uh, they've got mainstream media, national TV, you name it, really working with this sheriff to demonize the liberty movement that's growing in Washington State. Representative Matt Shea, thank you for coming on with us. Thanks for having me on again, Alex and Joe. Good to see you again. You too, sir. Uh, tell us so, uh, your view on all this and what you think is happening. Well, so w this sheriff is completely out of control. In fact, I would use the word he's becoming unhinged. And this, this started several years ago when he brought the Southern Poverty Law Center here to Spokane, Washington, to train sheriff deputies. I actually sat in on that training to see exactly what they were teaching. I had my aide with me. We took very copious notes. And he put up on the screen there. And, and by the way, this sheriff tries to claim that he didn't know what the training was going to be about, and yet his picture was in the bottom right-hand corner of the slideshow. So he tries to claim he didn't know, but he, he knew exactly what was in this training. And during this training, they put the picture on the screen of the leader of the We the People movement down in Pullman, Washington, Jeff Williams, put it up there, and they said that he was a domestic terrorist or an example of one. Guy has never been tried, never been convicted. In fact, I don't think he's ever even been investigated for that. And yet the Southern Poverty Law Center was demonizing this individual. Now, it was brought to the sheriff's attention. And instead of apologizing and saying, hey, I messed up. This shouldn't have happened. I'm sorry. It took six months and several meetings of local area constituents and leaders to get that sheriff to send an apology letter to Jeff Williams. And then years, a couple of years later, when this deputy finally says this out in the open on camera that the MRAPs are for constitutionalists, this sheriff, again, doesn't apologize. He just tries to say this was taken out of context. Alex, I don't know in what context that would ever be okay to say something like that. And myself and many others that believe in freedom and liberty, that believe the Constitution means what it says, we're sick and tired of being demonized. It's the people that are ignoring the Constitution in this country that are the problem. It's the people like this sheriff who, by the way, has been investigated for assault, for pumping private gas into or public gas into a private vehicle. He is he's said publicly that he wants to stop all lying in his department. And yet there was a murder of a pastor and a pastor literally mm -hmm. on his own property here in Spokane, Washington. There was a two million dollar settlement from that case because it was very clear that pastor was shot unlawfully. That deputy continued on his department. And by the way, during the investigation, it was uncovered that deputy lied on his employment forms about outside employment, which was a sex toy shop he was running with his wife, lied on that and was never fired for it and was only fired this year. On and he was in an unmarked vehicle, right? And he was in an unmarked vehicle. I think they've got something planned big for this sheriff. I, I don't know if they're trying to bait patriots in the area to try to you know, have some incident. But clearly, this is a key area. That's why we're focusing in on it. It's got a lot of patriots, a lot of constitutionalists, a lot of veterans, a lot of conservatives, one of the most awake areas in the entire Pacific Northwest. Indeed. And we have State Representative Matt Shea here breaking this down with us. I just want to know why he poses on the cover of major newspapers and magazines standing on the Gadsden flag and standing on basically the American people when that's one of the founding flags of this country. That flag predates the American flag. That's one of the first battle flags. It's the Marine Corps uses it. The Army has it. I mean, this is just really arrogant and aggressive. And let's let's pull back. This is a tiny window because most departments are smart enough to either reject the Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, or they keep the training secret. We told everybody the MRAPs is for us. Now we've got videos of departments all over the country or their manuals saying it's for us. I'm going to repeat this. Thousands of heavy armored vehicles with 50 cal machine guns, you name it, 
have been delivered free of charge or in some cases sold to departments for war with veterans and gun owners and conservatives. This is outrageous. It's criminal. It constitutes an attempted soft coup by the Obama administration. And when people like Representative Shea and others have the will to go in the face of this tyranny, they get demonized. And let's talk about his demonization of you. In fact, they gave me the report a few weeks ago. If somebody reprint uh, that newspaper and bring it to me, because it's in a bunch of the newspapers, but this is a big paper there. You read this stuff, you can't believe they're saying it or implying that we want to kill people or that you want to kill people. And he says that you're out of control as a state rep. He's really escalating the rhetoric when we've never said any of this. What do you think's really behind this? Because I really see the pieces and it doesn't look good. Well, I think there's two parts of it, Alex. The first part is they're trying to bait liberty and constitutionalists Liberty movement folks are trying to bait us into doing something. That's the very first thing. The second thing is they're trying to come after veterans. And in particular, this sheriff's supporters tried to denigrate my service record in, in last year. And I served two combat to tours overseas, Alex, in Bosnia and in Iraq, both. And I got to tell you, I am I am furious. This this sheriff would try to say that I'm some sort of an extremist. I'm some sort of a domestic terrorist. When I sat there and I fought overseas the very people that he should be more concerned about here in this country it, it oh is that's right i forgot the the <laughs> new article from last week he now compares you to isis he actually says like the terrorist in isis what, what's going on with that well he says he compares us to isis he compares constitutionalist to isis then he tried to walk back and say that was taken out of context again i would say there is never a context in which you say that word in the exact same sentence, the, that, that acronym ISIS, in the exact same sentence, that you're implying that constitutionalists are domestic terrorists. You don't say that. And that's what's so alarming about the sheriff. On top of the video that he did last year, October 20th, 2014, where he says, I can affect your freedom and take your life. Mm -hmm. We need to be asking questions of this sheriff. That's our job. And this sheriff, instead of blaming victims and blaming other people, should answer for his actions. And I have publicly asked that he resign. And Alex, I, I'm here to ask you today, that we need you up here in the InfoWars spotlight on this sheriff, because very clearly there is something going on in this area. In fact, there's kind of a tale of two sheriffs going on. We had the VA come up Priest River, Idaho, and threaten the firearms rights of a veteran here a week and a half ago. And Sheriff Daryl Wheeler stood in the house with us and said, no bureaucrat is going to take away the God-given unalienable rights of one of my citizens and one of my constituents. Yeah, tell us about this hero sheriff that we should get on the show and, and interview versus this this bizarro sheriff. Yeah. Yeah, so this so Daryl Wheeler said I think what every sheriff should be saying that bureaucrats cannot take away any sort of God given unalienable right. There's no judge, there's no the jury. They've even said they're gonna use Obama announced a month ago the VA model for the FBI now, for regular citizens to just magically take your gun like a no-fly list. You don't know how you get on it. They just come take your guns. Well, yeah, the VA is sending out letters like that to, to veterans all over the country. Hey, sorry, uh, we don't think that you're quite stable enough. You're not able to handle your finances, so the VA is going to come in and seize your weapons. Now they're announcing all Social Security recipients that take automatic wire transfers. This is a, the FBI announced this. Will be considered... Uh, financially uh, unable to take care of themselves and uh, basically will now be wards of the state, your guns will be taken. Well, it's only going to be a matter of time before Sheriff Ozzy Nezovich brings in Snopes to help solve crimes as well, to help uh, with the ISPLC. Joe, I can't believe that I just said on air that a month ago, because you can pull it up, mainstream news, that they're now going to have the VA model go after people on Social Security uh, saying that you know, it's like their neck's broken or something. They can't have guns. Well, their neck's not broken. Just because you have a money transfer and do automatic wire transfer of your check, that that means you can't take care of your finances. And then the Congress came out in the Washington Times the next day in the Hill newspaper and said, Congress warns Obama not to implement. That isn't enough. He's going ahead with it. Representative Shea, can you believe it's moving this quick? I mean, this is really bold. It is very bold. The last two months, have seen just a massive escalation of what what is very clearly a movement toward tyranny, no question about it. And up there in in North Idaho, 
And this is what's going to happen across the country. For all your viewers, all your listeners, this is what's going to happen across the country where they're going to have a doctor say, and, and they didn't say that he was mentally deficient or mentally incompetent. They said that he was not competent to handle his VA benefits. That's what they said about this veteran. And therefore, under the Brady law, that he could no longer own, possess, buy, or sell a firearm. And it's very interesting. After we went up there, we stood on the front lawn when the, when the uh, VSO showed up there. We had the sheriff with us. And the VA completely backed down and, and began running away from this as fast as they possibly could. The very next business day, so the next Monday, the same doctor who had made that decision and had never followed up over eight months after this gentleman had a stroke to see that he'd actually recovered from the stroke, wrote a letter and said magically, oh, he's all better now. He's, he's totally fine. Th that These are test trial balloons. They have said it. They are coming after everybody. And I'm telling you, if they try to disarm millions of people on Social Security, it's going to start a civil war. And I think that's their plan. So how do we not respond? Well, we don't get violent. We politically get involved like this state rep and go and stand in the doors, draw attention to it, show video of it, and it will backfire. I think that one of the great the great examples of this was just a, a video we posted here over the weekend, again, involving this, this sheriff's office and a particular Deputy Lawhorn, interesting name, by the way, where there was a pro-life protester on a corner, completely legal. Four ladies come up and begin harassing him, hurling violent and vile insults at him right in his face. A homeschool mom pulls over and begins filming, and it ends up that this guy, the guy that's protesting, instead of the four ladies, is the one that is put in handcuffs and detained yes. and treated abysmal. abysmal abysmal in fact i saw that video give us the name of that we'll put it up on screen because this is what we're talking about there are more patriots than there are pro-death people the woman pulls over to document then she's able to catch the sheriff's deputy following the southern poverty law center soviet roundup plan to oh i've got one of these pro-lifers let's take him to jail because they hate the fact that last a weekend or the weekend before last there were thousands of demonstrations across the country some of them 500 some of them one person some of them a thousand some of them 20 people but every person going out did something by drawing out the tyranny by showing what these evil forces want to do i mean if that doesn't show how wicked this sheriff is nothing does there it is spokane sheriff's deputy harasses peaceful pro-life protester threatens witnesses on video this is what it is to have a hardcore communist organization that's what the southern poverty law center is just hardcore evil running our sheriff and police departments i mean this is sick representative shea and the the perfect example of how to act in this situation is what this whole homeschool mother did she remained calm she remained very respectful and she demanded that they state the reason she could not be there. And this is despite the fact that I want to read this for you, Alex. It's to, despite the fact that in the sheriff's own standards of conduct, it reads this. The Spokane Sheriff's Office recognizes the right of persons to lawfully record members of this department who are performing their official duties. Members of this department will not prohibit or intentionally interfere with such lawful recordings. They're not even abiding by their own standards, their own clear standards. And this homeschool mom did a phenomenal job by remaining calm, standing on her God-given unalienable rights protected by the Constitution and demanding that that deputy state the reason why she couldn't be there. And he didn't have an answer. I'll tell you All what's exciting. I want to get Joe Biggs take on this when we come back and the state reps. You can feel the good people standing up in your gut. And they're so much stronger, so much more focused than these evil people. And evil knows it. That's why from Rutgers to the University of Texas, they're trying to restrict free speech because they know they got to shut us up. When we come back, we're going to fight back with the Second Amendment with Joe Biggs, Representative Matt Shea, VoteShea.com. And this sheriff's trying to organize movements to have Shea removed from office. We'll be back. You know, I'm going to move Vani Hari, the food babe, who's launching another major initiative and having huge success, to next week because what she's doing is very important and we've got major GMO news uh, where Germany is basically banning everything from the U.S. Russia is because it's so polluted, it's so dangerous. And, and that's good. It'll stop big agra uh, from doing what they're doing, voting with our dollars. Here it is. Germany joins Scotland in seeking ban on gene-modified seeds.
So that's all coming up. We have Joe Salente the last 30 minutes, but I want to be able to get into this Planned Parenthood situation, the Chinese stocks, uh, what's happening uh, in Europe, where I see all this going. I want to get into this clip where comedian uh, jabs Hillary Clinton for attending Bilderberg uh, on national TV. This is very exciting what's happening, but I need to talk to Representative Shea and Joe Biggs for the rest of the hour to really be able to flesh all this out. And I appreciate them joining us. We're going to go back to them in a moment because I tend to start talking real fast. I start sweating. I start getting angry, not because there's something wrong with me. If I was a German in 1938 Germany, believe me, I'd be upset about what I saw. Military equipment being deployed locally, people being demonized for their free speech, restrictions on gathering if you weren't in the right group, uh, kids being told their parents weren't their bosses. Classic totalitarianism. And I got to say, Hitler's tyranny early on was focused mainly on select groups. It wasn't general. The general level of bizarreness with public schools all over the country banning uh, touching hands, banning dodgeball, banning boy and girl, restricting free speech. Schools all across the country are, quote, banning all flags. See, all flags are hurtful now. All language is hurtful. That's the goal, where they can ban and restrict anything they want, when they want. They're the arbiters who decide. These people are such tyrants that I get upset. I mean, when they're deploying armored vehicles in every town, and then police and military have told us for 18 years since I learned about this, from police and military, the chief of police of San Antonio, the head of emergency management in Kingsville, I have them on video saying Bill Clinton had Delta Force approach them about preparing martial law and gun confiscation. And by exposing that, they had to back off. They were thinking about pulling off more Oklahoma cities, folks, and blaming the liberty movement. But we exposed them, we backed them off. Now they're back, and it's like 10 times worse than it was. And they're openly saying, and we have another clip from Indiana, we're going to play in a moment, saying... This is for the American people. This is for the veterans. They're going to attack us. That's in Morgan County, Indiana, police sergeant saying the same words that we know came out of the mouth of the sheriff's deputy in Spokane because it's Southern Poverty Law Center. And in their public documents, they say I'm evil and horrible and, you know, all this stuff. But in their internal ones, they say I'm a terrorist. We know that's come out. They were saying about locals that run mainline Tea Party groups that this is a terrorist. And imagine the sheriff deputies are all sitting there in a room, hundreds of them, learning in a major city, a major town, that this guy is a terrorist. So they see a woman out with her First Amendment. She's a terrorist. I'm going to give the floor to Joe Biggs and Shay for the rest of this segment and the last segment of this hour. But I've laid that out. We're going to play this clip. Briefly, I want to just remind viewers it is essential that you spread the word about this broadcast. There is a reason they're attacking it. There is a reason they're demonizing it. Because we're here raising the alarm like Paul Revere. The exact same office Paul Revere had, we are in that position today. So is Matt Shea. So is people like Joe Biggs. So are you, like that woman out there with the pro-life sign. They want to intimidate us not to do that. That's why they tell us not to. Now, most departments would support it because they're good people. We have to expose the bad people that are globalist collaborators by engaging them peacefully. They want to get it violent because we're winning the info war. No, we've got hidden cameras inside your Planned Parenthood. We have hidden cameras inside your state houses. We're coming for you. We're stronger than you. There's more of us. We're awake now. We're coming. We're coming. Go ahead and act however you want. We're coming for you. I'm glad you're scared. We're coming. Go ahead. Engage in some terrorism. Blame us. This isn't 95. You're not going to get away with it. You didn't get away with 95. Most people know that was an inside job now. Go ahead. Try to pull it because it's going to blow up in your face literally. Before we go any further, we have the best colloidal silver out there, bar none, 30 parts per million, highest quality. I am not going to sell out of it this time because we're not going to get more until mid-October at least, maybe November. So I'm going to try to hold back enough so at regular sales price, we'll have enough to get us there. 
So I've done a calculation of selling it, how many we can sell until we need to stop the sale. Thursday or Friday, we'll have to end it guaranteed. Buy two bottles at regular price, get two bottles free, or get 30% off the regular discounted price. It's an amazing deal. Colloidal Silver is so amazing. A lot of people know about it. Read about it at InfoWarsLife.com. Continuing, Super Male Vitality. After being sold out for weeks, Vermil Vitality is back in stock at InfoWarsLife.com. We are now taking orders on this new emergency shipment, our biggest shipment ever and the strongest. It has hundreds of five-star reviews on Power Reviews, third-party review site, highly respected. We link to it at InfoWarsLife.com. Here are just some of the latest reviews. This is by Inquiry, Miami, Florida. I feel a burst of energy within minutes. I use it in the morning after I get up to go to work and also take another before my daily workout routine in the afternoon. Wow, wow, wow. My power has increased when hitting the gym. I also started noticing that my muscles don't hurt as bad as they used to after hitting the gym hard. My muscle recovery has improved tremendously. Thank you, InfoWars. All your products are amazing. 1776. Okay, that's Miami, Florida. Thank you for the review. Thank you for your support. Power Lifter Dave. Initially didn't experience much in the way of results, so I held off writing a review. Then a little over a week ago, I began to notice some dramatic changes in how I felt and even in my mental state. This stuff is the real deal, and it varies the dose. I withheld a star because I want to see the long-term effects when things normalize within my body. But I would and do recommend this to my friends. Absolutely worth giving this a shot. Yeah. What it does is block estrogen mimickers. It gets your glands to start releasing. It doesn't mimic a testosterone. It gets your body to release a whole bunch of stuff, according to group. I don't know the technicals. Read about it, InfoWarsLife.com. And it helps fund the operation, so it's a win-win. All right, I'm now going to try to settle down and shut up after this clip. Here is, again, what we mentioned, the sheriff's deputy uh, there in uh, the county in Indiana. The full videos on InfoWars.com saying the exact same thing that the sheriff was saying uh, out in Washington. Here it is. We really didn't have the the violence that we see today. Um, the Not weaponry true. is totally different now than it was in, in my, the beginning of my career. Um, plus, you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. All right, uh, Joe Biggs, you've been sitting back listening to all this. I want you to take a few minutes to break all this down. I mean, veterans, very low crime rate. Conservatives, one of the lowest crime rates. There isn't an escalation in patriots engaging in criminal activity or terrorism, but they're trying to prepare us for when they false flag, in my view. Go ahead. I mean, just like that guy said, these guys are coming out of the military and they're automatically able to uh, make these IEDs, which is complete and total BS. It'd only be a small portion of the people who actually train with explosive ordnance disposal or anything like that, or just some random stuff that you can figure out on the internet yourself. But they make it seem like you come back from Iraq and Afghanistan and you have this capability to go out and build these complex bombs and go blow stuff up. When in actuality, when you go over there, you learn how to restrain yourself. You learn how to use uh, uh, just different types of how you carry your weapon, uh, where you point your muzzle, the safety with it, how you talk to people, how you approach, how you can de-escalate situations easier. My ability to de-escalate a situation is much easier than it is for a normal civilian who hasn't quite been through what I've been through. So when you see these sheriffs come out here and they say that we're just ticking time bombs, that's kind of just out of control right there. I mean, that's way out there. Well, there are some that are ticking time bombs, but statistically, veterans have lower crime rates than any other major group. Well, it's the just ones a load of crap. The ones that are ticking time bombs are the ones that have been through a, a, a crazy scenario, such as like a lone survival thing. They bring them back and they pump them full of medications. They don't get to the root of the problem. They pump them full of medications. They pump them full of medications. Or they had something wrong with them before they went. Yeah, but that's what they need to do. They need to get to the root of the problem. Stop demonizing an entire group of patriots who decided to get up off their butt and go fight for their country. Well, they're getting ready to get rid of humans in combat and have all machines. And the last group the elite have to deal with is going to be the veterans. So there will be a major war on veterans worldwide. There's a war on men. There's a war on standing <coughs> up. You know, Obama acts like he loves these soldiers uh, that stood up on the train, they're all these heroes. That's exactly who they hate. But they're using the mainstream media right now to dumb everybody down. I go all over the country and I meet people, engage in conversations. A lot of people don't even know they have the right to carry weapons. They don't even know that they could carry an assault rifle or a shotgun or what they even need to do to, sure. to have a concealed weapon. What do you think of this, Sheriff? What do you think he's doing? 
I, I think he's just spewing rhetoric. I think he's out of control. I think this guy is a puppet for the SPLC. He's doing whatever he can to demonize the Patriot movement in Spokane. Like you said before, that's a great town full of great people. Everyone I met over there, good head on their shoulders, freedom-loving, liberty-loving Americans who want to do the right thing, and they don't want to live in a government that's going to try to take their land or pull them over and unmark cars. They don't want to have to worry about stuff like that. They want to be normal Americans. And now he's on the cover of the newspaper standing on the people, standing on the county. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's bizarre. They clearly are trying to get somebody to do something. Yeah, exactly. He's definitely. And then I said, I'm coming out there to you know talk to the sheriff, and he starts tweeting, "Good, it's about time." And I'm like, man, this guy really something's wrong with him. Yeah, and I told him, I said, hey, make sure you don't go on vacation this time because last time we went out there, we showed up under the police department. The guy was all of a sudden on this unexpected vacation that his apartment said had been planned for a while, but meanwhile he'd been spotted all over town while we were there. He was just ducking and dodging us. So we'll see if he actually stands up this time and comes out and talks. Well, we'd love to find out he was just wrong, but all right, I'm going to shut up now and go to Representative Matt Shea, VoteShea.com. I notice in the news articles they're saying, these are horrible state reps that are with these extremists. We need to vote them out, and that's what the whole headline uh, of the article says, that uh, Spokane Republican Sheriff says members of his own party are dangerously dividing people when he's the one doing it. Continue to break this down. So... There are a couple points here. First, I would like to also add that Sheriff Richard Mack challenged this sheriff to a debate. And this sheriff promised that at the beginning of the summer, he was going to have a debate with him. And it's been eight months later, and he has still not followed up to debate Sheriff Richard Mack. So it's just a, a continued pattern of behavior by this guy to say one thing and then do something completely different. The other point that I would like to make as far as this is concerned what we're really talking about when we talk about Planned Parenthood, we talk about this veteran that was being threatened, at least his firearms rights were being threatened up there in Priest River, Idaho. They want us to self-censor. They're trying to make the environment so toxic out there that we just self-censor. And that is the worst kind of tyranny. And that's what really I think ultimately they, they are trying to do. This sheriff is directly related to FEMA. And, and boy, he's acting like it. Many of his statements are, oh, the government's doing a great job. Tell that to the people up in north central Washington right now, where we had the Forest Service refuse to put a fire out when it was only an acre and it grew to thousands of acres and has destroyed dozens of cattle up there on one ranch in particular. So really, there's this disconnect, I think, between these people that are defending the bureaucracy and the rest of America. This sheriff says we need to vote these representatives out of office. And yet, because I stand on principle, because I expose this stuff. And these other legislators that work with me over in Olympia expose this stuff and we fight it and we stand on that line. That's what the people want. And we keep getting reelected by huge numbers, no matter how much money they throw against us. That's right. You and others, I was reading, you've had the Bloomberg anti-gun money coming into the state against you. Uh, you've got the Southern Poverty Law Center sneaking around. You've got the media demonizing you. But all that does is make you more popular. What do you think that tells the sheriff? Well, I think it scares the sheriff, and that's what's making him so nervous. That's what's making him become become unhinged like he is right now. And when government is fearing the people, that's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. It is a good thing. That's what freedom is. That's what freedom looks like. And I, I don't know, uh, you know, going to some place over on the west side, downtown Seattle, if they're going to feel the, the same way I do about this. But many people in rural Washington and in eastern Washington do feel this way, that bureaucrats are literally becoming little petty tyrants, and that we're really experiencing bureaucratic terrorism. And people are sick and tired of being guilty until proven innocent. And the way that this sheriff's been acting, especially toward constitutionalists, and especially calling them out on several occasions, is clearly fostering that feeling. And one recent incident, and this has not been widely reported on, there was a gentleman who is very well versed on his constitutional obligations and his God-given unalienable rights protected by the Constitution. And he stood just like this homeschool mother did in this Planned Parenthood video and said, tell me why you are questioning us. Are we free to leave? Are we being detained? Well, he ended up getting arrested. He gets taken downtown. He's sitting there getting booked. And one of the first things that's said to him is, you're one of those constitutionalists, aren't you? And that's the attitude that is pervasive throughout this department. They try to say, these things are taken out of context when in reality, this is exactly what they're being trained on. 
it's incredibly creepy to see them doing this and it's all because of agenda 21 it's all the new zoning all the new regulations it's preparing the police and the military for this tyrannical agenda and the agenda's admitted it's in the news they just don't want us speaking out against it because the agenda is so unpopular i see the people across the political spectrum really starting to awaken uh, representative shea what would you say the sense is of your constituents about what's happening the the sense is exactly what you're saying that, that something is drastically wrong in this country that we are headed in the exact wrong direction that tyranny is dramatically increasing especially over the last two months uh, people before that said, oh, that would never happen in America are now saying, oh, my goodness, you were right. Infowars was right. What do I do? So there is a great awakening happening right now. And just that one incident up there in Priest River where the VA was threatening the firearms rights of that veteran on one post, we had 760 Facebook shares literally went viral in a matter of hours. And I think that is a testimony to the fact that people are waking up. And not only waking up, they're ready to get engaged and stand on the line and say, enough, no more. You, you've gone too far. You need to back up and get back in your constitutionally designed box. That's right. They're always trying to intimidate us. They're always trying to shut us up. They're always trying to make us think we don't have power. But there's a time in history when people finally go across the line. They don't care what the enemy says or what's done or what's in front of them. They're going to find a way to expose it. They're engaged, they're motivated, nothing's going to stop them, and I can feel that energy rising. I had dread just a few months ago seeing all this corruption expand, but now I can see it and also feel it. Just like in a football game, you feel the momentum change when you're in the stands. I can feel the spirit of liberty exploding. Can you feel it, Joe? Of course. Everywhere I go, I can feel it. You see it when you talk to people. When, you, when people engage in conversation with you, you can tell that there's a great awakening happening and we're going to start winning. And they're not afraid. They know that they just got to get up off their butt, start speaking out, and, and they don't care win or lose. They're not going to shut up. Final segment with our special guest. Representative Matt Shea from Washington State will be with us with Joe Biggs five minutes to the next hour. Then we're going to get into the abortion situation and so much more. But this new video put together that illustrates reality and fiction together how Red Dawn is beginning to parallel what America is becoming like. It's like a Red Dawn in slow motion. Uh, Darren McBreen and, of course, Rob Dew put this together last week. I thought I'd play it now and then get the representative's take on it. If you're a radio listener, it's even more powerful as video. So go to Infowars.com forward slash show. We're also going to post the video itself to YouTube today and post it uh, to Infowars.com in the next hour. But here is that Red Dawn parallel. It's 11.59 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. They took a lot of people away. People that they thought were going to make trouble for them. People that had guns or things they wanted. They just took them away. Where? Re-education camps, that's what they call it. So, so part of it is we have to break through our kind of private, private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. I have decided we really need camps for adults. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. Now they were taken to racetracks and fairgrounds where the army almost overnight had built assembly centers. Come on. I'm a sorry citizen. I refuse to recognize you guys. What kind of a situation in the U.S. would well, you see like that happening? See, I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists, a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons. Um, plus, you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. These people are radicalized and they don't support the United States and they're disloyal to the United States. It's our right and our obligation to segregate them from the normal community. It's what we're doing. 
doing here, and let's not kid about it. We're building a domestic army because the government is afraid of its own citizens. Put your gun down, really? Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty. It's Alex Jones. Are you some kind of a constitutionalist? If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. See, that's my response is, oh, my God, like a foreign enemy is attacking. I see the manuals, the training. We got them first from secret sources, as everybody knows, seven years ago. And they're preparing for war with us. Representative Shea, we've got a few minutes to break. We're going to come back and finish up. But, I mean, isn't that the key to this, that they don't want to have a debate about the treasonous, traitorous preparations that are being made that our own military doesn't want to follow? And, and that's really what's backfired is the military is so awake now because they're trying to train them to take on their grandfather and their father who are a veteran. I mean, this has really backfired. Can you speak to that briefly? Absolutely. The, the Oath Keepers in the military are alive and well. The spirit of 76 is alive and well. And I, I would just comment on the one part of the video. We're disloyal to tyrants. We're disloyal to tyranny. We are loyal to America. We're loyal to the Constitution. And we believe the Constitution means what it says. And what they try to do is deflect, obfuscate, devagle, get people pointed in every direction except what they're actually doing. Exactly, because they are literally collaborators that have taken over the country. I mean, they are an occupation force. That's not Thank rhetoric, folks. Listening to GCN. They're trying to ban the word boy and girl. Back in Visit 70 GCN seconds. Live. Well, com Representative today. Shea, finish up. All right, Representative Shea, you got cut off uh, by the break there. You were talking about the open preparation for war with the American people. They call us traitors. I mean, I can't believe that they've got the nerve to try this, but they're really doing it. Where do you see all this going? Well, you don't build a surveillance state unless you intend to use it. You don't give MRAPs and bayonets to local law enforcement unless you intend to use them. You don't try to shut off all dissent, shut off all questioning, unless you want the people to self-censor under that tyranny. You don't do that. You don't build all these constructs unless you intend to use them. And I've said that in many speeches, and I think that resonates with people because they see what's going on before their eyes. Whether we're talking, you know, all of the the, the things going on with cameras and and surveillance and, and all of that, or we're talking about this sheriff trying to demonize one group of people. And what's alarming to me is that when you look back through history. That demonization comes very, very closely on the heels of persecution. And the persecution's already started. It has already started. Take, take for example, the, the baker in, in Oregon or the photographer in New Mexico. Just because they can't do something according to their conscience, they suddenly are the enemy. In fact, there's a case here in Washington State with the Stormans family. They don't want to stock a Plan B abortion pill on their shelves. And they have had to spend $3 million fighting the government in that case. Listen, I live in Travis County, and this is the only county in Texas where I have to pay for people's abortions. That's not right. Or, or sex changes. Since when do I have to be your slave and pay for everything? That's exactly right. When, that doesn't even make sense in the American paradigm. We have an absolute, in Washington State's Constitution, it recognizes an absolute freedom of conscience in all matters of religious sentiment under Article 1. Section 10, then also in Article 26. That's why you said reason of conscience federally do not join the military. That should stand up. I mean, since when does the right to say no stand? It's exactly right. If, and here's the, here's the bigger problem. If we can't have the right of conscience, if we can't have freedom of thought, then we don't have freedom at all. That's why I believe the founders put that as in the first amendment in the Bill of Rights yep. and then followed it immediately up by the second because one cannot be absent without the other. Well, that's why California just passed that law, getting rid of the conscience uh, exemption for vaccines. Th they're saying, you're not allowed to say no. We don't recognize your intellect. We're God. That's exactly right. That's why it was so important and I think was so encouraging to watch what happened up in Priest River, Idaho, with that veteran and the VA trying to threaten his firearms rights. And you had a bunch of patriots and the county sheriff show up armed, but very peaceful and very firm 
that they were not going to take away any of his firearms. And guess what happened? The government backed down. And that happens in almost every situation where the, we, the people, stand up peacefully but armed, and we stand on our rights and say no further, they back down. And Alex, that is why it is so important for any legislator to wear like the Spirit of 76 pin. And that's one of the reasons I proudly wear it over there in Olympia, because everybody needs to know that is the spirit we need to get back to. What kind of support are you getting to get uh, Sheriff Ozzy Nezovich out of office? We're getting a ton of support, actually. Uh, radio, uh, local radio personalities are highlighting the issue right now. Uh, there's been a petition drive that has received hundreds, if not thousands, of signatures at this point to remove him from office. Uh, and we're continuing to pursue this. And as people are seeing what this sheriff is doing, they are very disturbed by it. And it's waking them up as well, and they're getting involved. Well, that's what tyrants do. They always push it too far. We just need to keep this peaceful. Notice they keep saying we're threatening them because that's all they can do is lie. And I give you this promise, Representative Shea, either late this year or next year, I will, early next year, maybe even sooner, I will get out there, but mainly to go talk to these great sheriffs, but we'll also go do a demonstration. Uh, I know your office is right across the street from the sheriff's office and just point out that we know they're being prepared by foreign agents for war against the people. Thank you, Representative Shea.